I have to start with a really direct question. Do you have a large CD collection? If you do, great. Let's continue. If you don't, I think you can skip <laughs> this episode of the Audiophiliac Daily Show. This is really for CD collectors. In other words, people that have lots, hundreds, thousands of CDs. If you don't have that, mm, you don't need to watch this review. But if you do, and you're a serious audiophile, the Jay's Audio CDT2 Mark II CD Transport may be right up your alley. Now, before we go any further, um, how products feel that you physically in, you know, touch and use to, to play them, uh, I think is crucial. If it doesn't feel good to use, Eh, it's 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 not satisfying over the long term. You don't want to be touching plastic in a flimsy tray and all that stuff. Kind of like it breaks the spell. <laughs> no problem with this Jay's Audio Transport. It feels like a piece, like a solid piece of, as the British say, kit. The it's a top loading machine, and the plate. It's actually a thick chunk of. Uh, aluminum that you slide open to put in the CD and then put a clamp on top of it. It's velvety smooth, just really first class. The buttons are all metal. The remote is a big chunk of aluminum. Could be a little lighter, but hey, who's quibbling here? But you know, it, it just feels right. So the feel part got that nailed a 10. Now the other thing you're thinking, hey Steve, it's 2019, what is the future of CDs, who knows? Well, I think CDs as a format are going to be around for a while. But um, when it comes to high-end CD players, there's always a question about the laser mechanism itself. That's not forever. It's a mechanical, electromechanical device, and they do wear out. They're not, they are not forever. So the good news about this J's transport is that the laser is actually user replaceable. The laser itself, they sell for $100 and the entire laser mechanism is a plug-in piece and they sell that for $300. I'm showing you just that piece right now on screen. And I think that adds a certain amount of comfort in terms of this is the kind of product you can own for a very long time and not think, oh no, the laser's going to crap out or it's going to get weird and then they got to service it and stuff. I think that should help uh, allay some of those fears. Oh, the price. I didn't mention the price. So the price itself is $2,398. So the prices are, by high-end standards, very, very reasonable. Matter of fact, I had a guy over recently who's in the business a very long time. He was unaware of Jay's audio, as most people are, including me, until recently. And I said, uh, let's, let's use it a little bit. Tell me what you think. And we were using it. He said, yeah, this is very, very nice. And I said, how much do you think it costs? Take, take a guess. And he said, yeah, it's made in China. I said, absolutely, designed and made in China. What do you think? He said, well, since it's Chinese. And he's saying like $4,000, $4,500. He said, no, it's $2,398. He was Wow, <laughs> that's pretty cool. And I agree. Oh, before I forget to mention it, it comes in silver or black finishes. So the back panel, I'm showing you the rear right now, and it has just four digital outputs. There's coaxial, there's BNC, there's AES-EBU, and that last one, the HDMI, is an I2S connection, which many believe to be the best. And you could use that with... Well, I use it with a Denifreps Terminator DAC. And, uh, and I also use a Bartok, a, a DCS Bartok. The Bartok doesn't have an I2S input, so I use the AES-EBU connection. So I'll show you a small selection of the CDs I use. Shelly Mann's My Fair Lady. This is a, a great, great recording, but even the standard non-XRCD version is pretty darn good. And I also use this one, John Hassel's uh, Fascination. This is a Water Lily recording with uh, Cavi Alexander at the controls. Awesome. Very, very audiophile. Then a very non-audiophile recording, Raphael Sadiq's 
easy rolling, which is a compressed EQ process recording, just to have a taste of reality and with real music, how that gets done. And this guy, um, Zappa, Yellow Shark. This is uh, Zappa's music. He's not on this recording. He was present at the session. It was done with basically like a chamber orchestra. And it's just a stunning, stunning recording, especially when played with really with a really good transport and DAC. To put the J's in perspective, the only other transport I had on hand was an Oppo UDP203. It's actually a Blu-ray player, but I've used it as a transport for I don't know, a couple of years on and off. It's perfectly serviceable, sounds good. Uh, hook it up to a great DAC, you'll get great sound. But the, but the question here is, moving up to a high-end transport like the J's, what do you get? And uh, it's a pretty dramatic difference. It's a, not a subtle thing. And the first thing that grabbed me about the difference was space. It just opened up spatially. Uh, going back to the oppo, the sound was flatter, more two-dimensional, dynamically smaller. It sounded more, well, for lack of a better word, digital. So yeah, and the first rounds of comparisons with these recordings and many others was that question of <laughs> space is the final frontier when it comes to digital. Now, when I use the word space, I'm basically saying low-level resolution. In other words, the loud parts are loud, but when you get into the more subtle things in the mix, the sound of the room, air, reverberation, that kind of thing, that's what I mean by that kind of spatial depth that you get with a good transport, that a lot of that is lost with a lesser transport like the, the Oppo. I just want to lay down uh, the, the fundamentals here of what's going on with a better transport. Just the ability for the music to engage me rhythmically. It was more get up and go to the sound of the Jays than of the Oppo. With the Shelley Mann record, My Fair Lady, that, that toe tapping, you know, bopping kind of feeling you get was just more present with the Jays than with the Oppo. So before I go any further, I have a feeling that some of you are thinking, actually one of my friends who I had lunch with today was asking me, well, how does it compare to the Cambridge CXC transport you reviewed a year ago? And I said, well, I honestly can't tell you because it was a year ago. I don't have the, the CXC anymore, so I can't do it. Because in that review of the CXC, I said that the CXC was substantially better than the Oppo. And now I'm comparing this one to the same Oppo. So by extrapolation, could you say that the CXC and the J's are comparable to each other? And well, I wouldn't blame anybody who felt that way, but I can't give you a concrete answer because it's been over a year since I heard the CXC. So since I didn't compare them, I can't tell you what the difference is. Uh, I can certainly tell you what the difference is in terms of build quality and construction and all that other cool stuff. Yes, the J's certainly stomps all over the Cambridge as it should because it's much more expensive. The, G the Cambridge is $449. I wish I could have keep everything I ever reviewed so I could always compare everything to everything. Of course, it would take forever to finish a review if I had to do every single comparison that fell in line with the current product. So, sorry, that's not happening. So with the, with the Raphael Sadiq record, which is a typical compressed, mess with process recording. Um, it was still very compressed and EQ'd and process recording over the J's, but it sounded like a better, I guess clearer is not exactly the word I'm searching for, but a better mastering, like somebody went in and remastered it and made it sound a little better. That That's basically what I got out of using the J's with it. Now with the audiophile, better sounding recordings, the, 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 the greatness of the recording has shined through on the J's and was muted by the oppo. But with more, if you listen to a lot of compressed music, maybe I'm sort of saying, mm, I don't know that what you really get. Because if the music is, is, is processed to begin with, uh, making it sound better is, is hard because it's already <laughs> crunched to start with, so I, I wouldn't I wouldn't make a stronger case for getting a really great transport or DAC 
for that matter, if you listen mostly to very compressed processed music. With the audio file recordings, I compare the J's audio I squared S to the AES outputs with the Denifreps, since the Denifreps DAC had both, the Denifreps Terminator. And um, there, the difference was again that spatial holographic thing that happens with great DACs and great uh, recordings. You just you're sort of filling, you're going into that space, into that room. And that is, again, to me, to my way of thinking, that's all about low level, subtle room sound details. That's what the I squared S delivered compared to the AES. So, how does the Bar Talk compare to the Terminator? Well, let's put it this way it's almost four times the price. So, uh, shocker, it's a better sounding DAC. And I will review both of those DACs in the um, coming month or, two, month or so. So, yes. But anyway, the, the DCS is a better sounding DAC at, mm, well, I was going to say about how much. I, don't, I can't give you a percentage how much. But it is a better sounding DAC and it doesn't have I squared S. And believe me, I was a happy kid. But I also use the transport with just a standard coax cable between the two. And that also sounded really good. So, how to weight these things, the sound of the different digital connections, they are there. It's kind of akin to hearing the difference between filters in DAX, but it's not going to make it sound like a wholly different experience when you're going from AES to I squared S or coax. There are differences there, and if you have uh, it happening at both ends between transport and DAC, you should take advantage of those differences and listen that way. But I wouldn't say, no, I'm not going to get a J's because my DAC doesn't have an I squared S input. You know, it's, it's 5%. Let's give it a number in that case. I'll give you 5% better with I squared S. Not like earth shaking differences, but. So, you know, with the, with the Yellow Shark, um, this recording with this, you know, it's not a symphony orchestra, but it's a, basically a large chamber group. It sounded to me, I don't know, I don't know what the miking was, but it sounded like a few mics, eight or ten, not a, not a mic on every instrument, and it felt like the mics were up high and the instruments were below. I had that sense of this height and bloom to the sound that was just freaking amazing. And the way the, the, the dynamics are played in this recording, which most of the time aren't like big, like wham, bam dynamics. They're just the, the way the music just swells and enlarges. It's just stunning. Just really, really gorgeous. I'm getting goosebumps right now thinking about how the, the Jay's Transport and the DCS DAC were just, it was just coming through and it was just a stunning, stunning performance. It's what it was. It was a performance between Transport and DAC that was pretty incredible. Not to downplay the sound that I was getting from the, the Transport and the Denifreps. Denifreps, which I listened to actually more than the DCS, because the DCS arrived late in this process. So most of my listening time with the Jay's Transport was with the Denifreps Terminator. And, you know, <laughs> this, is, this is good. I could really settle in with this and not think about changing uh, anything. But I'm a reviewer, so I am always looking for changes. It's kind of the nature of my job. I can't say, oh, well, this is it. I'm done. Well, I'm not done because it's my job to always look for new things. But in terms of you civilians out there, you might be done with that combination. I'm back where I started. If you have a CD collection that numbers more than four or 500 CDs, you've already made a substantial investment in your music collection and owning a great transport will definitely <laughs> change the way you think about the music that you've already paid for. That's what makes it worth it. And of course, going forward, if you're going to continue to collect, and again, if you're not going to continue to collect more and more CDs, well, maybe you shouldn't be thinking about getting a transport. Maybe you should say, oh, I'm kind of good where I am right now. That's a valid uh, approach as well. I see this as a product for someone who's like, I believe in the CD format. It, it, you know, it may be the last fully baked uh, digital format. It, 
it's it's a it's a lockdown format it's not going to change the red book is the red book every cd that was properly mastered in the first place it's in good condition will play on every cd player that's properly working they don't say uh, scanning thinking maybe reject it just plays it's it's not a fussy format is what i'm saying it's a very robust format that the very first cds to now they just work that's not true for most <laughs> digital formats that are changing and there's incompatibility cd is just locked and i like that <laughs> I really talk about guilty pleasures. It's just like it just does the job. It just makes music, which is what this is all about. Now, I think I've done it. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audio Filiac Daily Show coming to you six or seven days a week right now. Uh, if you dig it, please subscribe. Hit that little button down there. Thank you. Uh, you can also follow me on Twitter at Audiophiliac Man. I urge you, strongly, check out the playlist. Oh, the playlists are so good. There's playlists for speaker reviews and headphone reviews and music reviews and it's the Audiophiliac of the day where other people, meaning other than me, get to be on this show and tell you about their systems and do all kinds of cool stuff. Those are really good. And then there's interviews with people in the audio business, designers mostly, and they tell you about their craft. That's a separate playlist. So a lot of good stuff, over 700 episodes. If you want to binge, man, that'll take you a while to get through all 700 of them. But be my guest. Uh, oh, and one more thing. If you've gotten this far in the video, you probably know what I'm about to say. Check out the Patreon. Look at P-A-T-R-E-O dot com slash audio filiac and then see what happens you'll be surprised you'll be amazed as always thank you so much for watching